There we go. Good evening, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Hope all is well. There um, we go. Hold on, let me turn off. Good this evening, morning. good evening, everyone. Let me turn off, got that echo going on. So good evening, everybody. This is uh, David Leach, the financial ambassador here in my home office in uh, Newark, Delaware. And I haven't done a creducation live in a minute. So I felt like I wanted to come on here and share five credit myths and truths that a lot of you probably didn't know. And just talk about some of the realities of America today. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen so that I can share some info, some important information with you. Give me one sec. All right, so let's start off with some of America's realities and mindset about personal and financial affairs today in America. Did you know that 68 million people in America have a 601 credit score or lower? Did you know that? I know I was in that number about four years ago. I had a 528 credit score. And there's actually, believe it or not, 75% of Americans that have less than a 700 credit score. And if you didn't know, because a lot of people I speak to, you know, they think that when they tell me they have a 620 or a 650, that that's good credit. No, that's bad credit. A good credit doesn't start till 680. A 680 to a 749 is considered good credit. 750 to 850 is considered excellent credit. Now, there is a difference between a FICA score and a Vantage score. A lot of people like to get their credit scores from Credit Karma, but Credit Karma gives you a Vantage score. 90% of lenders are looking at your FICA score, and that's normally anywhere from 20 to 50 points less than whatever Credit Karma is sharing with you, okay? More than half of Americans don't even know their credit score. It's unfortunate and you know, I also look at it sometimes. Remember back in the days when people didn't wanna know whether or not they had AIDS or not, everybody was scared to, to uh, go get tested and everything. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know their credit scores. And I know that cause I speak to uh, hundreds of people all the time. The average debt is over $225,000 with many people having less than $500 in savings which is sad nowadays, you know, if you've been working on a job for five or 10 years and you don't have $500 in savings, that, that's a problem, you know, cause what you're doing is not working. And nearly two thirds of Americans cannot pass a basic financial literacy test. I believe I, I did that a few months ago. Uh, I read the financial literacy test for you to take and everything. Maybe I'll do that on another day, but we're gonna pass it. We're gonna uh, continue after this. So 49% uh, of Americans have no retirement and only 18% know that they're on track to reach their income goals for retirement. Think about that. This is some alarming facts about America that people have been working on jobs for 20, 30 years and they don't have nothing saved up for retirement or, or, or have little basically 65% have no will, 82% have no trust, 71% have no medical or financial power of attorney. Now that's alarming and it's not, it is alarming, but if you didn't know, there's actually $58 billion in unclaimed assets because people don't have a will. Those, these are things that we have to start thinking about and considering. And some people think that we don't have anything to leave. Yes, you do. You know, it's, it's crucial to have a will so that your family's not fighting over your stuff. You know, unfortunately, uh, Prince died a few years ago, or Aretha Franklin died a few years ago, and they didn't have a will. And now their families are fighting over their estate through a uh, uh, probate court because they don't have a will. And did you know, if you didn't know this, if something happened to you, you know, do you know the state can take over your kids? They can say, you could tell, well, a family member, you want them to take it, but the, the, uh, the fact of the matter that the state can take over, just so you know. So you want to get that will and have that will in place. Every two seconds, a person's identity is stolen. 
identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America right now. So if you just blink, guess what? Somebody's identity just got stolen. You know, if I always joke with people, I say, if you got bad credit, you ain't got to worry about nobody trying to steal your identity because ain't nobody want it. All right. <laughs> so why is this the case? Well, think about it. I'm 52 years old. Our formal education didn't teach us anything about personal finances, ownership, financial freedom, or success. And these are things that I feel that are crucial that we should have learned. Because if I don't, what I know now, if I had learned this in high school or elementary school, I don't think that a lot of us would be in a predicament that we are when it comes to uh, self-employment in reference to having bad credit. If you agree with me, do me a favor, drop a five down in the comments. If you were taught something about credit, of financial literacy in high school or elementary school, do you feel that you would be better off today? Because think about it, when kids go to college, right? All these companies are throwing them credit cards. Ain't nobody teaching them how to manage it. You know, nobody's teaching us that we shouldn't be charging any more than 30% of our limit. You want to ideally keep it below 10%, but you don't want to go any higher than 30%. So I'm now that I know that, I managed mine very carefully. When I started this journey four years ago, me and my wife's cards was maxed out. They was at 98%, you know, but once I got educated, I applied the knowledge that I learned and I got it down to, I think it was 24% when I got my, uh, my infinity. And then recently I used this debt payoff tool that we have under our protection plan and I paid off two of my credit cards, they got it down to like 4%. And that helped me get approved for $40,000 in credit, okay? Now let's jump into some of these myths. Myths and truths that you don't want, that they don't want you to know. Did you know that credit agencies have no legal authority at all? Excuse me. Some people think that because it says credit bureau, that it's a governmental authority. It's not. <laughs> These are uh, 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 billion dollar companies that are in the business of selling your information. That's it. They are not governmental authorities. So just, if you didn't know that, now you know. Did you know that credit agencies are not required by law to put anything on your credit report? There is no law that says anything has to be put on your credit report. This was just some company that decided to start monitoring people's uh, uh, financial well-being, I'll say, and credit. And it was just a way for a company to start making some money. And that's all it is. They sell your information. Credit lenders report to the credit bureaus your, your, uh, the type of account you have, your balance, how many late payments. And that's how creditors are able to find out how, uh, uh, if you're a high risk or not. Now, did you know that the Fair Credit Reporting Act, everyone has the right to review dispute information that's on their credit report and have it removed if it's not accurate. Now, if you didn't know, 80% of the information that's reported to the credit bureaus is inaccurate. If your name is Robert and they have it down as Bob, it got to come off. It is it's not 100% accurate. It has to come off. If your balance on your credit card was $500 and they got it as 498 or 505, that's inaccurate. It has to come off. But it is a, a, a tedious process and most people don't want to go through it. And that's why I always tell people, sometimes it's better to let a professional do it that knows what they're doing, that knows the credit laws and can get things done because that's what they do. You know, I'll, when some people like to tell me, well, I could do it myself. I said, well, why you ain't do it yet? Why are you calling me? If you know how to do it, why you ain't do it yet? Okay, but I look at it like this. You can wash your car, but what do we do? We go to a car wash. You can change the oil in your car, but what do we do? We go see a mechanic. You can even defend yourself in a court of law, but what do we do? We go get an attorney. Sometimes it's best to leave it to professionals that know what they're doing and they know the law and they know the process. Because I always tell people, I'm like, did you get bad credit overnight? If anybody got back, if you did not get bad credit overnight, do me a favor, 
put a two down in the comments. If you didn't get bad credit overnight, put a two down in the comments. So this is why I like to tell people, if it took you five, 10, 15, 20 years to get bad credit, why are you expecting to get good credit overnight? It is a process. You have to trust the process, have to work the process. Now, a lot of our clients, most of them start seeing results within the first 45 to 90 days, but we do recommend that they stay on for at least six months to see the best results, okay? Now, some people have faster results. Some people may take a little longer. A credit report is just like a fingerprint. Everybody's is different. Everybody got different information, different credit history, uh, uh, as far as late payments or, or length of credit or things like that is a it is a process you have to trust the process i know i'm so glad that i trust the process i started with a 528 credit score now i have a 703 i've never had a 700 credit score a day in my life and if i did i ain't know nothing about it you know i was one of those people that had that luxury car payment but I wasn't driving a luxury car. Some of y'all might understand what I'm saying, you know, where I was paying 23% interest on the 2007 Mercury Mountaineer that I had to put $2,500 down on. I allowed this company to work on my credit and uh, now I'm driving an Infiniti Q50 with no money down and now I'm only paying 8% interest. That's a big difference, big difference from 23. All right, so let's continue. Number four, did you know that paying off a past due debt does not change or erase the fact that at one time you were not paying it on time? Now, this is a biggie. I know we already passed tax time, but I've spoken to some recent clients and everything. Do not pay those collection accounts, okay? Do not speak to a collector on the phone. That's free advice, okay? Because this is what happens. Let's say you owe Comcast. $1,000. You ain't paid them in 180 days. They write it off as a tax write-off. It's a tax write-off for them. So they already getting paid for it. It's, it's a business loss. But then the collection agency comes in and buys your debt for a penny on the dollar. So if you had a $1,000 debt, they might have paid $100 for it, and they're coming after you for that $1,000. But see, this is how they work on people's ignorance of the law because people do not know the collection uh, uh, credit laws and uh, they run off, they, the collectors get on the phone and they threaten you, people get scared and they run and pay them, okay? And then it's still showing on your credit report, even though you paid it off. It'll show a zero balance, but it's still gonna show up as a derogatory item because you didn't pay your bill at one time and it's hurting your score, okay? When we can actually get those negative items deleted without you paying a dime. When I started, I had seven collection accounts. Five of them came off on the first round of dispute letters. I didn't pay a dime and they have not come back. It has been four years ago. They have not come back. Now, if you are talking to a collector, okay? This is what I want you to do. Another free advice, get you a pay to delete letter. Get it in writing, not over the phone. Get it in writing. Nine to, most of the time, they're not going to offer it, okay? But get you a pay to delete letter stating that if I pay this bill, I want it deleted off my credit report. Get that in writing. I also suggest not settling on accounts because see, when you settle, that's what it's going to show in your credit report. It's going to show that it's settled and it's also going to tell lenders that you don't pay your bills. So you had to settle it. That's another derogatory item on your credit report. Okay. So now you learned something. Number five, did you know that excessive inquiries are derogatory and they will affect your credit standing once you get three or more? Now, as I was stating earlier about the credit scores, Credit Karma gives you a vantage score. Majority of people, they get excited, say, oh, Credit Karma say I got a 750 or a 703. But then when you get down to the car dealership, they running your credit and they're looking at your FICA score and find out that it's a 620 or a 650. Then they're running your credit over and over again, trying to get you approved. And what that is doing is hitting, you're getting hit with a whole bunch of inquiries. See, one or two inquiries are okay. Three, eh, 
is okay too. Anything more than four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more inquiries, it makes it look like you're desperate for credit and you're a high risk. Now, me personally, I always tell people, unless you have over at least a 650, don't apply for nothing. A 650 FICA score, not a Vantage score, okay? I suggest don't apply for anything because nine times out of 10, you're going to get denied and you're going to have a new inquiry. That's what I did. I said, I, once I got my, my infinity, I didn't apply for nothing. I let my inquiries drop off. Inquiries can stay on your credit report for up to two years, but we can also get those deleted too. Uh, I always suggest to people do not dispute an inquiry of an account that you already have open and you're using. Don't do that. That was my mistake four years ago. I had my Capital One card. I was disputing the inquiry. I disputed the inquiry. The inquiry was deleted and they closed my account. So don't dispute any inquiries of accounts that you currently have open. Uh, so that's basically uh, my tips for today. I hope you got some value out of that. If you if you felt that that information was informative, do me a favor, drop a three down in the comments. Please like this video, love this video, share this video, tag somebody in this video. If you're catching it on the replay, do me a favor, it only take two seconds to drop down in the comments replay. Now, if you really want to learn more information, a little detail on what we do, you know, those that's new on my page, I've been doing this for four years, next year, next month to be four years. I'm also a board certified credit consultant, so I know what I'm doing. And I've went through the process myself. I know my wife has been through the process. Her credit score has went up over 240 points since she's been with the company. Mine's has went up over 180 points. Uh, my sister-in-law, she was actually dealing with uh, Lexington Law for about two years. They couldn't get her foreclosure off her credit report. She'd been with us for like 45 days. The foreclosure was deleted. She got approved for a $400,000 mortgage a year ago, and she bought her a house in Connecticut. Now, I will say this also, because a lot of people think that we just do credit. We don't just do credit because we're not a credit repair company. Credit repair companies like Lexington Law, CreditRepair.com, they can only dispute two to three items a month, and that's why they drag it out for so long. But being that we're a nonprofit 5013 Corporation, we're a financial literacy company. See, we don't want to just help people fix their credit. We want to educate them on how to maintain it. Because see, if you just hire somebody to fix your credit and they don't teach you how to maintain it and teach you how to change some habits, you're going to wind up coming right back to us. So we're going to educate you about it. And we also give you 12 services so that you can get that financial freedom. Remember when I said, I showed you a few minutes ago that about 68% of people do not have a will. Now I used to work for a law firm. So I know that a will alone can run you 500 to $3,500 easy just for the will. But guess what? We actually draft up your will, trust, medical and financial power of attorney for free. That's all included in our protection plan. So if you want to learn more information, we provide you with, nah, I'm not going to tell you. If you want to learn more information, do me a favor, drop down in the comments link and everything, because we are actually having a webinar this evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that I'm going to teach you, or you're going to learn how you can increase your credit score. And my business partner and my sister from a different mister, and everything. She's my family. She's been a real estate agent for 19 years. Uh, she's been with me for about two years. She's actually going to be going over that this evening on how you can increase your credit score. And if you're looking to increase your bank account, you're looking to make an extra $500,000 a month from the comfort of your own home. I'm going to be going over that this evening also at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to join us this evening so that you can learn more information, like I said, drop it down in the comments link and I'll hit up your inbox and I'll share that information with you. Outside of that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and everybody have an incredible evening and good night.